One of the smartest humans on the face of the earth, who has won a Nobel Prize, is working on building a rapid fire laser powered nuclear fusion reactor. Rapid fire laser powered nuclear fusion reactor. That's a mouthful to say. And actually, it's kind of scary. This new reactor is going to use boron as a fuel for its fusion reactors. As boron does not produce harmful neutrons, will this change the outlook for nuclear energy worldwide? Well, it could. It could make me a liar. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. I'm Sam Evans. I'm the Electric Viking. Thank you for tuning in. I've said nuclear is not part of the world's future. It could be a nuclear bomb, but nuclear energy I'm talking about. Hopefully there's no nuclear bombs because then we'd all be dead. However, this new innovation and a few others that I've talked about on the channel recently could potentially put a spanner in my predictions or basically mean that I was wrong. Now, what do you guys think about that? Do you see nuclear playing a part in the world's energy future? The reason I don't is because the cost of renewables have come down so much. The reliability of new renewables is there. The land needed for them is less because of various reasons. People don't want to live near a nuclear power plant. And well, their costs continue to come down. Plus, people are very comfortable with living near a solar farm, not near a nuclear power plant. However, Shuji Nakamura, a Nobel Prize awardee in the field of physics, is the latest entrant in the energy domain looking to generate power using nuclear fusion. Nakamura, a professor at the University of California, Santa Barbara, founded the company Blue Laser Fusion last year and aims to build a nuclear fusion reactor by 2030. Nuclear fusion technology aims to replicate the process occurring on the sun, in other words, insane heat, to generate vast amounts of energy in a controlled manner. In fact, the heat they're going to generate is even hotter than the surface of the sun. Unlike nuclear fission, fusion does not produce radioactive waste, a big advantage, making it a promising energy source not only for the Earth, but also for space missions. It's also significantly cheaper. To initiate fusion ignition. Researchers must heat the fuel to over a million degrees Celsius. That's the hard part. This is a feat they've accomplished using various methods. However, the problem here is this. Sometimes the amount of cost it takes to generate that amount of heat is not enough to make it worthwhile for the amount of energy the nuclear fusion reactor is giving back to you. However, the main challenges in sustaining the reaction and producing more energy than is consumed during the fusion process are said to have been overcome. There's two approaches to sustaining nuclear fusion that actually make sense. Nuclear scientists have used two major approaches in their attempts to sustain a fusion reaction, say interesting engineering. One involves the use of magnetic confinement where the fuel is in its plasma state held in a torus or donut shape by powerful magnets, as in super powerful magnets. The approach has led to the development of tokamak reactors and has seen a lot of involvement from companies and venture capital as in a lot of people think this is a very very promising technology people who are much smarter than i am so maybe it really is what do you guys think about this let me know if you know about this let me know in the comments now the other idea is to use lasers and fire them in rapid succession the drawback of the approach, however, is that large equipment is unable to fire lasers in continuous mode, whereas small equipment cannot generate outputs high enough to ignite fusion fuel. This is where blue laser fusion thinks it can make a difference. Now, I like this idea. I think this could actually work. Nakamura, who was awarded the Nobel Prize for his pioneering work on the development of blue light emitting diodes called LEDs, believes that his company can harness the semiconductor expertise to create a super secure pathway for achieving nuclear fusion and transforming it into a commercially viable venture. The precise details of the approach remain undisclosed as Blue Laser Fusion currently has a pending patent. and They don't want to give away their secrets to the competition. However, Nakamura is confident in the feasibility of constructing the rapid fire lasers, and he envisions the establishment of a one gigawatt generating reactor in Japan or the US before 2030. Prior to that milestone, the company intends to construct a small scale experimental plant in Japan before the conclusion 
of the next year, as reported by Nikkei. Now, this is um, kind of a bit of a challenging prospect in Japan, considering what we know happened after Japan's tsunami, when a nuclear reactor was destroyed, meaning many, many acres of land that could pretty much never be used again. In the few months since its inception, Blue Laser Fusion has filed more than a dozen patent applications in the US and other countries. The company is also looking at boron instead of deuterium as a fuel for its fusion reactors. As per the company's claims, boron, when used as a fuel, does not produce harmful neutrons, making it a more favorable choice. Blue Laser Fusion is teaming up with other Japanese companies such as Toshiba Energy Systems and Solutions, a maker of turbines for nuclear power plants, and Tokyo-based Yuki Holdings, which provides metal processing services. In December of 2022, the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in the US successfully demonstrated the use of lasers for generating more energy from a nuclear fusion process than what had ever been done before. However, unfortunately, this accomplishment was only momentary. And for blue laser fusion to become commercially viable, they must demonstrate sustained capability over extended periods. I mean, obviously, for something like this to work, it can't work for 10 seconds. It has to work for at least, what, 15 to 20 hours a day. That is the big challenge here. Is this technology feasible? Will it work? I think it will. Does that make it commercially viable in comparison to the cost we'll be paying globally in 2030 for solar, wind, and energy storage, battery storage? I think it's highly improbable, but you never know. Anything's possible. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, guys. Thanks for watching.